All right, ladies and gentlemen, Fab's in the house and welcome back to the channel. I got something pretty cool. This is going to be a technical review, so spoiler alert, there's not going to be any samples in this video. So if that's not your thing, just feel free to move on. Otherwise, just stick around, grab a cup of coffee. I'm just going to go through the specs, the quirks and the sounds of this little 35 millimeter fixed lens coupled rangefinder camera. This is, uh, was introduced in 1972 and it's a pretty cool one, tiny. It offers a shutter priority auto exposure. It is fully manual. Um, you know, there's a mechanical leaf shutter right over here. The camera works without a battery. Uh, but if you do have a battery, you can also use the meter. Uh, this is uh, pretty related to the Sears 35 um, and the latest uh, the 500GX and 500ME uh, variation of this very camera. So the, we have a Ricanon 40mm f2.8. It's a fixed lens. There's 46mm filter thread. It has a minimum focusing distance of 9 centimeters. The aperture range is from 2.8 to f16. As you can see from this ring uh, right over there. Um, shutter is a mechanical leaf shutter, copal. Uh, speeds are from B pose right over here to uh, 500 of a second, uh, but uh, you skip everything and you just start from an eighth of a second. So keep that in mind. Uh, you have a shutter priority uh, or manual uh, exposure modes. Uh, the meter is a lens mounted um, CDS cell, which uh, has a needle. I don't know if you can see, it's a little dirty. Uh, on the inside, um, the range, ISO range, which is, uh, where is it? Uh, over here. It goes from 25 to 800 um, ISO. So keep that also in mind. It might be some limitations. So you have to do some calculations. If you're doing ND filters or if you're pushing or pulling the film, keep that in mind. There is also a hot shoe and a PC uh, socket. Um, you know, X-Sync is at all speeds. It's a leaf shutter, of course. Um, but, you know, from a 60th to 500 of a second probably would be pretty appropriate for an electronic flash. If you use bulbs, uh, it's going to be 30th and 25th of a second. Uh, there is a self timer right over here, which is pretty roughly kind of eight seconds mechanical. Uh, this guy is uh, using a battery here under this compartment, which is a, a 1.35 volt PX675 Mercury. Uh, so it's gonna be, it's pretty much an obsolete uh, kind of thing. You can adapt uh, 1.5 volt, the SR44, uh, uh, but uh, you know, it's a hit and miss. Uh, dimensions, uh, it's pretty small actually, 400 grams, 420 grams, uh, and it's 113 millimeters by 80 millimeters by 57 millimeters. So it's pretty tiny, especially if you compare it, for example, to a Leica M7, uh, that's going to be the impact. I mean, full frame 35 millimeter and full frame 35 millimeter. I mean, regular 35 millimeter. It's what I mean. I got just something a, a bigger, you know, thing that like doesn't even fit the, there you go. So it's as tall as a Fuji GX uh, 690 Mark III. Uh, definitely uh, not in the same ballpark price uh, and uh, quality. I mean, but just to give you an idea of the tiny size of this thing, it just fits. Uh, look, it's in the palm of my hand. That's uh, how tiny this thing is. Um, I would say there's a um, marking somewhere, I believe, that says made in Taiwan. Maybe it's on the inside. Hmm. I've, I'm pretty sure this is made in Taiwan, uh, but uh, I don't know. I might be wrong. Some say Japan, but anyways, uh, this is a common issue that this camera has. And this is a light leak that I, uh, happens with the when the light seal just crumbles apart and I happen to replace it myself. I think I did a pretty cool job. Uh, the specs for these are this is one millimeter neoprene adhesive. 
uh, foam kind of thing that you can just buy inexpensively and fix the uh, uh, crumbling uh, lightly uh, seal. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, you know, the uh, there's uh, some pretty cool things about this camera beside the fact that, I mean, it looks pretty cool. Uh, the shutter release button is threaded, so you can use a, a cable release, of course. Um, you have a film uh, winder, of course, and you have a frame counter right over there, single stroke advance, and the counter auto resets when you load the camera. When you open the back, there is this little thing over here, which resets the counter. That's why it's in that position. Um, you have, um, you know, this auto and manual ring, which is right over here. So you see the A and all the aperture. So when you set it on A, like so, that's the, your auto exposure. Um, the M, it's going to be hard to show you. Yeah, beside the dirtiness. Anyways, the M pops up into any of these other modes when you uh, are not using the auto mode. And you have, uh, you know, a the shutter speed ring, which is this guy, which clicks pretty nicely, I have to say. Some ASMR for you guys. Yeah, sounds good. It's... Um, from a B, we said, to an eighth of a second to 500th of a second and match uh, needle, you know, in the viewfinder indicates the working aperture in auto exposure. So, uh, you know, it's like a meter readout in manual, pretty much. Uh, the film speed selector and window is located on the uh, lens barrel, as we said, and you get a focusing ring right over here and distance scale in meter, the green one, and in feet, the white one. So you have um, uh, a pretty cool rangefinder uh, patch, which is, again, yeah, it's kind of this one. It's it's not gonna focus, but anyways, it's a rangefinder. So you have a, a rangefinder window, of course, which is this guy right over here. So don't don't cover that, otherwise it's not gonna work. And uh, it's kind of bright. Uh, there's some parallax guides, which again, you cannot see because it's not focusing there, but still, uh, it's there for like close up and uh, for the infinite uh, uh, focusing. So you have that little bit of uh, uh, help. Uh, the rewind knob is kind of like lame because it's at an angle, so it's, it doesn't really help. Uh, this spins, yeah, but there's no grip and also it's a, a weird angle, so it's not the best. Um, you, It's pretty cool that you can use the like a PC sync socket for like corded flash, uh, in addition, of course, to the hot shoe. I uh, use a standard 135 uh, uh, film. Uh, you have you see sprockets right over here on both sides, a pressure plate, uh, there's an easy take-up spool lead in right over here, pretty easy to load. Um, the uh, What else can I tell you? The, the, I mean, one downside of this fella is of course the battery, that's 1.35 volt, the PX675 Mercury, it's kind of obsolete, but you can find some alternative. The problem is that um, the meter is always on unless the shutter is set to B, which reduces the drain, so that's a pretty cool tip. Otherwise, in a couple of months, this battery is going to be just gone. So keep that in mind. You know, the leaf shutter compact cameras of this era uh, have often small viewfinder. The, the uh, rangefinder patch is usually modest. And in this case, it's kind of dim and small. Yeah. So, I mean, but it's still, it's a very inexpensive uh, camera. I believe the uh, GX, uh, the uh, aperture ring is uh, cramped near the body and uh, so, but that's, uh, you know, a layout that it's shared with this guy. So, yeah, it's not the best. It's kind of, you need a little bit of attention to turn this, I mean, 
aperture ring which is the one you want to use probably the most um, there's a uh, um, what else can I tell you about this? Um, hmm. I think the pros and cons, uh, in long story short, are that this is a fully mechanical operated camera. So the shutter works without the battery. That's the, that's the main thing. Um, for example, in this case, uh, I can use this fella right over here, pop it on the top, and uh, because I, I, I don't have batteries here right now and I can still use this external uh, light meter so that's pretty cool I just uh, check the exposure and uh, I just set it uh, where is it uh, like so you see and that's it so it's gonna be two weight in two thousand of a second so it's not gonna happen because this is up to 500 of a second so I'm just gonna do 500 of a second and what is this boom it's 5.6 so I'm just gonna do 5.6 there you go it's already set in place so uh, you can still operate this fully mechanically it is a leaf shutter you know allows the flash sink at all speed there's a hot shoe and um, it's also working very well the light meter CDS works if you have the correct uh, battery it's a compact metal body you know practical 40 millimeter 2.8 it's sharp if you close it down to f568 it's pretty good close focus is 90 millimeter so uh, centimeter so not the best but it's still a 40 millimeter so that uh, is, is gonna work the bad is of course that mercury cell px675 that's also late you need to work around to make it work uh, there's no exposure compensation there's no a uh, auto exposure lock so you cannot just lock the exposure compose and click it's not gonna happen um, also like whenever you load the camera it just clicks so load and you put it in the bag you're gonna lose the frame 100 percent because there's no on off it's not lockable it's just like this um, another limitation is that the top speed is a 500 of a second and the ISO limit is 800 so there's a bit of a constraint if you use fast film or if you shoot in daylight you're not gonna have that much flexibility but still you can do some other again work around uh, another pretty uh, con a pretty big con is the small viewfinder and the small rangefinder patch and kind of like cramped aperture ring come on this is not a pretty cool design at all but uh, you know it's uh, pretty much the same as the GX so handling can feel pretty tight if you have gloves or if you have like big sausage fingers um, there's um, you know overall this is a pretty cool compact camera it's inexpensive if you want to start uh, dipping your toes into film photography 35 millimeter is the way to start and getting one of these is not gonna break the bank uh, I mean I got this uh, uh, relatively cheap and this is a fully mechanical leaf shutter rangefinder so shutter priority there's a meter there's you can use filters you can use flash uh, if you find uh, the battery you can use the meter right so you know if you're evaluating uh, one for your kit uh, just verify the uh, rangefinder alignment um, uh, verify the shutter speed first uh, check out the meter response with your battery solution work around and first of all and um, I mean most importantly check the light seals because uh, the ones uh, that came with this bad boy were like very very bad rotten uh, the plastic was just gummy and crumbling around so I just removed it with some alcohol and some q-tips I cleaned it up you see there's some residues left underneath that and then I just cut those uh, um, strips you see it made a little bit it went a little bit overboard into this part but still I was able to fix it so um, you know from a technical standpoint it checks a lot of boxes it's a pretty straightforward to use camera it's serviceable because it's you know mechanical and there's not really much complexity added to it it's cheap so I highly recommend it and I mean it looks pretty good right let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this fella if you like it if you don't like it you can share you can like the video you can subscribe uh, to Fable, uh, Fab, fabs in the wild um, and uh, see what's coming up next but uh, for now i really hope you guys enjoy this video thanks for watching stay tuned